Hi, and welcome to the Cloaked Hedgehog's YouTube channel. If you watched the Crash Course videos, and you want to know more about dogmen and about other weirdness, you might possibly want to follow these vlogs, which are simply just me reading my own blog posts through the years. They won't be exactly as I wrote them on the blog. I might add some and retract some and change some things around, but in general it will be blogs written by me and read by me. And in this very first one I'm going to talk about Dogman and ESP. Extrasensory perception. What is that? Well, it's a collective name for perceiving something through one or more senses other than the usual five. But do we really have only five regular senses? Is sight, smell, taste, hearing and touch all there is? Well, no. Some neurologists claim we have nine senses. Some say it's more like 21. Some senses fit within the boundaries of one of those five basic ones, such as touch, which also includes perception of pressure, heat and pain. But then there are other recognized senses, such as interoceptive ones, like equilibrioception, think of equilibrium. It has to do with balance and alignment and direction and acceleration and gravity. There are organic senses, which are senses of internal condition, like hunger and thirst. And there is proprioception, which is the perception of the position of the body parts. As in, you don't have to look at your hand to know if it's up or down. You can feel that. One interesting sense is one called magnetoception. It allows us to sense magnetic fields. It can be used to get a sense of direction by picking up on the Earth's magnetic field. Birds, for instance, have a particularly strong sense of magnetoception, which allows them to migrate all across the world and still find their old nesting spots. In humans, this sense is not as strong though, and I personally think it even varies between individuals. All senses can be higher or lower in individuals. When it comes to sight, people definitely perceive the world differently. Some have an impairment, some have eyes like a hawk, some are colorblind, while others are tetrachromats. I'll talk a bit more about this tetrachromat subject in a little bit. Certain people with no sense of direction might actually be lacking in their magnetoception sense. Drunk people tend to temporarily lose some of their proprioception sense, and they fail to close their eyes and touch their noses. Meaning alcohol makes it hard to know what your body parts are doing and where they are. In the world of dogmen, and people who have encountered it, there have been discussions about ESP, and how the creature seems to be able to be both physical and non-physical at the same time. When it comes to ESP, I've heard people talk about perceiving the dogmen in ways other than through the regular five senses. Many talk about the creature sending them a message telepathically about not to talk about their sighting or else. Many talk about having a distinct gut feeling when these things are around, and some even say they have been sightjacked, as in them seeing through the eyes of the dogman, and probably vice versa. Are these experiences really unexplainable? Well, we now know that people have so many more senses than we have previously been taught. How can we possibly say what senses a dogman possesses? What we perceive to be supernatural may simply be a sense we don't possess. The ability to move fast through rugged terrain in complete darkness, something both Bigfoots and dogmen have been said to do, may have something to do with night vision abilities, 
possibly in combination with a type of echolocation, commonly seen in bats and whales and dolphins. The claimed ability of dogmen and Bigfoots alike to vanish into thin air might be some unknown sense able to manipulate the electromagnetic field surrounding them, tuning them to a frequency below or above the visible spectrum. The ability to sightjack? Who knows? It might be an extension of that ability that allows them to communicate telepathically. Going back to the tetrachromat situation. Being a tetrachromat means that your eyes have four types of cone cells, which are cells that perceive different wavelengths of light instead of the usual three. Regular people with three types of cone cells are called trichromats, and they can see about one million color hues, whereas a tetrachromat can perceive a hundred times more. So if a person is able to perceive 100 times as many nuances as a regular person, are they also able to see infrared and ultraviolet? Birds can see ultraviolet, for example. There are animals who can see outside of what we call the visible light. And the visible light, as in everything from red to violet, that is one to one and a half percent of the whole electromagnetic spectrum. So what if something is slightly below one or slightly above the other? What if something is infrared? What if something is ultraviolet? We can't see it. Maybe some animals can. Possibly some tetrachromats can. We don't know. And strangely, it's only women that can be tetrachromats. Women's eyes are generally better at distinguishing colors, while men's eyes are much more adept at noticing moving objects. This probably comes from the historical roles we've been having, where women gathered while men hunted. Dogmen do seem to have some kind of power to reach our minds. I myself have experienced this even though I haven't seen a dogman, but I might have been near one. I was just outside the house where I lived back in the mid to late 90s. I was looking at stars. I've uh, always been interested in astronomy, and I have a little star chart, and I had a flashlight, and I had a pair of field binoculars, nothing fancy, just it helps. Even simple little binoculars like that helps when you're looking at stars. So, I had no thoughts of any danger at all. I was in the courtyard of this house where I lived in the middle of town, pretty much. Suddenly, though, I picked up this very strong feeling coming from a specific direction. It was from this small grove just between the house I lived and the neighbor's house. There was a height difference there. My house was higher up than the house next door, and there was a plank fence in between. I definitely sensed something was in that grove below the fence. Something very, very bad. I could feel it like a thousand needles on my skin, and a horrible paralysis and heavy fear overcame me, which seemed to be projected onto me by someone or something else. I heard a voice in my head, and I just want to point out that this is the first and only time that I've ever heard a voice in my head. And strangely, after I calmed down and thought about it, I realized that this voice was my voice. I heard my own voice in my head and it said twice, go inside, do not run. Go inside, do not run. So I went inside and <laughs> it was maybe 
25 meters to walk and every centimeter of that felt like I had hellhounds on my heel. Oh, I felt so much in danger. Oh my god, that was horrible. Horrible, horrible. <sighs> so anyway, I got inside, eventually locked the doors, I closed the skylight window I had, and I sat on the bed, I calmed down, and after about 10 minutes I thought, God, what was that? Gosh, I'm, I'm just an expert of, of making myself panic, my goodness, there, there's no danger, I'm in the middle of town, come on, get back out there. I opened the skylight window again, and immediately I heard this god-awful howl coming from the cemetery, which was a block away, half a block actually, away. Let me tell you, that window was closed again really fast. <laughs> I've also felt them in the ether, as I call it. While I'm studying this subject, sometimes I can sense something that I perceive as tentacles of energy searching through the ether. Kind of. It's very hard to explain. I can feel those tentacles. They may not be close, but I can still feel them somehow. They're searching. Searching for the one, searching for them, which would be me. The more I read and studied, the more I could perceive them coming closer. So I would take breaks when I felt them coming too close. I would. I would do something completely different for a few days. Back when I was working on those maps, I mentioned before that I first created those maps for myself on my own Google Earth. When I was going to transfer all that to Google Maps engine, map thing you see today and um, things got a little bit too intense because it took months to transfer months of 16 hour days it was from the moment I got up and thankfully I'm on disability so I don't have a an actual job that pays <laughs> to watch for so I, I can do what I want. It comes with a price, obviously, but I'm not getting into that. Um, from the moment I got up till the moment I went to bed, I was doing that for months. I could feel the tentacles. I ignored the tentacles. I wanted to finish the maps. One day, I could feel there was a connection made. I could feel it distinctly. There was contact. They had found me. I, I know exactly what it felt like. I was in this very chair. I just flew up out of the chair. I, I just knew. Oh, crap. They found me. Luckily, I understand that they had only found me mentally. They still didn't know where I physically was. <laughs> Yet, after this experience, I've become more afraid of the dark. Much more afraid of the dark. I... I can't even explain how much I can't look out windows when it's dark and I had this problem with a mirror in my bedroom that every time I was trying to sleep and I had my back to this mirror it felt like some really nasty things were coming out of this mirror. I knew it was probably my imagination but it was always there. I couldn't get rid of it. I tried for a month. And finally, I just had to get rid of that mirror. I couldn't have it there. I never, never look out a window at night. I sometimes force myself to do it because I don't want to live in fear of anything. But darn, it's hard now. There was actually a somewhat funny story. <laughs> it has to do with my fear of the windows at night. I was sitting here in front of the computer. I wasn't doing dogman stuff. Well, in a way I was. I was building for Sims 3. I don't know if anyone knows that, but 
I don't always do Dogman stuff. Sometimes I build houses for The Sims 3, which I upload to a place called The Sims Resource, where I go by the name Prickly Hedgehog. And I was building a house while listening to an episode of Dogman Encounters, because for some reason those things go so well together. I don't know why. I built the best houses when I listened to Dogman Encounters at the same time. So I was sitting there and I know which episode it was. It was a, a two-parter, sort of. There, there were two guests. One was a scout leader or something. And I don't remember what the other one was, but he was imitating a growl that he had heard. <laughs> and he had just done this like a minute before. And I was sitting here and my window was ajar because I don't like heat at all. So plus I love fresh air. So my window is always ajar. And I don't like that when it's dark outside, but it was ajar. And outside my kitchen window is like a picnic table that people can sit and eat and do stuff. And I live in an apartment. There I was completely absorbed in this horrible story of dogman encounters and this man imitating this growl when I hear the bloody same growl coming from just outside that ajar window of mine and I screamed I I screamed in English for some absurd reason. I remember I got up out of my chair and I screamed, Oh my God! <laughs> and I, I, I did that and then it took me like two, three seconds and then I had to go check. Because I always, I have to face stuff like that. I just have to. So I screamed I thought for three seconds and then I went to the window, I yanked up the blinds, just I knew there was going to be a dogman there. There was no dogman there, there was a friend of mine, the bastard, who thought it would be a wonderful idea to come and scare me. Oh, remind me to kill him, remind me to kill him so much. That was me. <laughs> and let me just say that this fear of windows at night did not get better after that but it was a little bit funny no it wasn't funny then at all <laughs> anyway to conclude i trust my instincts much more these days and i try to hone them instincts are senses as well we may not have a name for them yet but it will come I've always said that the supernatural is only supernatural because science hasn't named the real phenomenon yet. But there is still more to discover, very, very much more. But even today, many supernatural senses can be explained as a combination of many of the senses I wrote about, like the ability to pick up on fluctuations in a magnetic field the human echolocation sense, etc. So don't go discounting something without researching it first. All right, I have no idea if this will be of interest to anyone to listen to me reading my posts, but we'll see if a hundred people watch this or if it works reasonably, I might continue and we'll see how this goes. Anyway, um, whatever you do, be safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.